Hey guys, well here we are in Fusion 360 and today we're going to machine the Z-axis bearing block. And mainly we're going to concentrate today on the back side here. We've got to machine part of this section out here where the ball screw goes through. And then we've got to machine this uh, nub here. So we're going to machine all this material here. So it looks pretty straightforward and simple, but I ran into a couple of issues that I wanted to address and go over with you guys in case this happens to you in one of your projects. We're going to be setting our coordinates to this top right hand corner. This is a four inch by four inch by two inch thick piece of aluminum. And you can see that the outline of the stock there. So the first operation is just a boring operation. I'm just going to center drill this center location here. These three mounting holes will get done on the top side. Second, we're going to come back and bore all the way through with a 5 16th inch drill bit. Pretty straightforward stuff that we did in the last video. Next we're going to do a boring operation to clear out this hole here. This is a 3 8 inch 4 flute end mill. But we're not going all the way down. We're just going down to this, the end of this bottom of the bearing pocket here. And then next we're going to do some adaptive clearing to machine all of this surface area here. Now this is where I had sort of an anomaly with Fusion 360 and I've ran into this before but it didn't cause that much of a problem. However this time I noticed something strange when I machined out this the first time. As I mentioned before in some of my past videos it takes a few parts before you actually get everything tweaked and fine-tuned the way you want it to. At least for me with my experience level that seems to always be the case. This is actually the way I want it to look but let me show you what the issue is. So if I go in here to edit this adaptive clearing operation here for the geometry, I want to select this area here that I want to machine. Everything looks good. Okay, you see it's generated the G-code here. So you can see how it sort of dips in here where the hole intersects the toolpath. And it does it on all three of these. Well, this created a a problem when I was machining it quarter, sort of gouges it out. It's not something that I that I want to happen. Now I shot a video clip of this so let's let's go out to the mill and we'll take a look. So you can see in the short video clip there how it dug out when it reached this line of code right here on the toolpath. So to get around that. I edited the geometry of the toolpath and I selected this top area here. And then for my bottom height, I selected, uh, chose selected contour and then minus 0.25. And you can see now it, it's exactly the way it was when I showed it to you earlier. All the tool paths are nice and even. And this made for a nicer part and I didn't have that gouging. So if you run into that with something you're trying to machine, that's the way to get around that. 
is just select the top contour and then for your bottom height do a negative value to get to your depth. In the next operation we're just going to come back and finish contouring this. Now I ramped this down and when I actually ran the g-code the ramp was only at 13 inches per minute and it can actually be at the feed rate. It didn't need to be slower. We're just cleaning that up and then it goes around the part there and, and takes a final pass. When I set up the adaptive clearing I left stock on this radius so that I could clean it up in that finish pass. And you can see here the radial stock there I left was ten thousandths. Alright so so we can simulate it now. So we're boring that center hole it goes all the way through to relieve the um, it just helps get that hole started and also a, a hole for coolant to flow through although it seems to get clogged up most of the time and we're going to come back with the 3 8 inch in mill and get the relief there for the ball screw we're going to come back and start doing our adaptive clearing a lot smoother and a lot nicer with the modified contour there. This went really well. Ended up with a very nice finish on this. And that's it. So now let's go out to the mill and we'll machine this out. Hey guys. Well, I'm out in the shop today and we're going to start working on the z-axis bearing block. I've cleaned up all sides with a fly cutter and got it nice and smooth. We're going to start uh, machining the back side first. So let's get started.
going to cool it. That's why it was foaming up. I'm completely out of distilled water, so I don't like adding tap water to the coolant. I'm afraid that it, the minerals in the tap water is going to affect the rust issue, so I don't like to use it. I know some people have used it, but I just prefer not to. All right. Turned out pretty good. Um, went a little deep on that finishing pass there. I'm not sure. I'll have to check the code. But it should be okay. It's going to rest on this flat area here. Turned out pretty nice. You can see it went a little bit deeper right around that finishing pass. I'm not sure what's up with that. I'll have to check the uh, code, but it'll rest on this flat area, so I'm not too concerned about it. Okay, so I went and pulled up the G-code that I was running, and I noticed on the 2D adaptive that I only went down 0.24, and that's supposed to be 0.25. So that's why I was not even there on those two operations. So I went back into Fusion 360 to take a look at it, and sure enough, a mistake on my part for the stock to leave I wanted to leave ten thousandths on the radial but not on the axial so like I said before it takes me at least two or three times to get the g-code really fine-tuned the way I want it because there's always something that I feel like I can go back and correct and this just happens to be one of them so hopefully those tips there will help you with your machining and you won't make any of these errors that I'm making. Even though Fusion 360 has been out for over a year now and I've been using it pretty steady, um, I always seem to find things new that I learn uh, as I go along. But that's the fun of the whole process. Well, that wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions or questions, please feel free to comment. Please stop by and visit the website. Thumbs up if you like the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And most importantly, be safe.